The last day that I was with our students was Monday, October 8th in their pharmacology class. And we all knew that a storm was coming, but we've lived through all kinds of hurricanes before. And we just kind of thought, oh, well, here comes another one. We all knew we had our little duties to do at home. And so we'd finish up and would see each other in a couple of days. And that's what we told the students when they left. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in a few days. Later that night, we got emails from our dean and from the college stating that we were going to be closed for two days. And we sent out all of our announcements and emails to our students. And we just didn't think anything of it. I've lived in Mariana for 31 years and, and been in this area of Liberty County down in Bristol and Mariana for my entire life and been through a lot of hurricanes. And uh, this one, you know, as, as we were watching the Weather Channel, everything was coming in on Friday. Uh, we started evacuating our, our baseball team, softball team, and, and women's basketball team. Our men's team was had a tournament that week, the next week in, uh, in Orlando. So we were really late to getting those guys evacuated. We evacuated them on Wednesday morning before the hurricane came in. But, you know, it's something that we've never seen here in our lifetime. So I got a call personally Tuesday night before the storm hit at 3 a.m. And um, they said it's strengthened. You may want to get the teams out if, if you can, but you need to leave by 5 a.m. or it's going to be too late. So we made the decision to wake them up and, and pretty much outrun the storm to evacuate. And I think that was a problem. A lot of people didn't have that warning because it strengthened in the middle of the night. And by the time people woke up, it was just too late to leave. That was a storm that we had never experienced uh, anything like before. Um, the, the destruction around town um, with, the, with the power lines down, the trees down everywhere, just people were landlocked in their homes, unable to, to get out and move around. Um, that was very, very humbling. Uh, communication was very limited right after the hurricane. Internet and phone services were um, completely out and available only in certain areas for those who did have did have service. You know, it was tragic uh, that what you saw, uh, we stayed in the public service building, my wife and I did, and, and to walk out after the eye of the storm and look to the north and see all the trees that were cut in half and knocked down and, and the damage it had done to all the houses, you know, it was just something that we've never seen here in our lifetime. It was complete devastation. It was like a bomb, you know, like a bomb went off. The anxiety of being away and just watching, you know, Mariana, a little town in the Panadol, Florida on the Weather Channel, and um, not knowing how your friends were, how your, how your teammates were, how your faculty were, you know, just, it was, it was very, very anxious time and, um, and the people here went through so much more. I watched the storm out of my living room window. I was there with my kids. My wife was actually at work and we watched trees fall <clears throat> on neighbors' homes, on cars, uh, on our stuff. Uh, our house wasn't damaged, we were, we were fortunate. And when the storm was over, the neighbors got together and basically we had to get together as a neighborhood and cut ourselves out of our neighborhood. And we had those stressors of, hey, what's going on with school? When, are, when is school going to start back? How far behind are we going to be? Are they going to cancel the whole semester or are we going to pick up right where we left off and, and just try to make it up? We, we didn't know. We were actually on the road for for almost three weeks living in hotels and having to feed them all and so the expense and just that alone was was pretty incredible but you know we were happy to to not have a group stuck here with with no power and no water and um living pretty much in as refugees like so many people in our area did that day that we came back for the faculty meeting uh i don't live in mariana and when i entered even the areas around it coming from dothan it was unbelievable, and the destruction that I saw, I just couldn't even imagine what our college was going to look like, our beautiful campus. And now, when I drove up, um, I was so glad just to see everyone in the whole faculty. Everybody looked tired, um, but we were there together. And Dr. Clemens assured us that we were going to be back, and be back soon, that that would be the best thing that we could do. Everyone was concerned about our students and concerned for each other. But um, we got a, a renewing strength that day at the faculty meeting, and we knew that we would be back soon. 
regaining a sense of normalcy was the uh, most importance. And that was uh, definitely uh, a vision that was shared across campus. The health science department began to reach out to the students by phone to establish each student's safety and well-being. Many students reported that they were glad to hear from us as we were glad to hear from them. Houses destroyed, several faculty and staff members' houses were, were not livable. Um, they have, we all still have damage at our houses that we're trying to fix individually. You can imagine right after the storm, to set a date within two weeks to open school, obviously a lot of people were not keen for that uh, because they're personally affected so much. But it made that decision and it provided focus and some stability for us. It was something that we could accomplish uh, soon if we all pulled together. I'm Sarah Clemens, president of Chipola College, and I want you to know that we're starting classes back on Monday, October the 22nd. And we know that Hurricane Michael has been a catastrophic event, and we have all been affected by it in a, in a personal way, and the college has been affected by it. But we have been working night and day in order to try to get power restored, water and sewage, and the internet. And so we're told that those things will be up and going next week. So if you can come to campus on Monday, that would be great. Uh, if not, then come as soon as you can, because the quicker you can get started and back on campus, I think you'll find it's easier uh, to, to get caught up. It's very important to us that you be able to finish the semester successfully. And we're going to do everything we can to find out what your needs are and to help you find the resources and to help you be successful this semester. I think you're gonna find that the employees and the administration here are really compassionate because especially because we've been going through the same, same things that you're facing and uh, we really do understand. Uh, people don't have water, they don't have uh, gas, they don't have any of the things that we're used to having. Maybe you lost your textbooks uh, in the storm. So whatever your needs are, please come and share them because we met together for the first time as a faculty and staff in an entire college uh, today. And it was so great to be together. Uh, everything seems so much better. Even though we're all facing uh, helping family that have just facing terrific problems and neighbors, but still to be able to get together to realize how far the campus has come in the last week. Um, there were so many trees and um, everything was disrupted. But when you look at things now, it is amazing that we've been able to accomplish so much. And I think we'll do the same thing with our classes. You'll have to make up a couple of class periods that were missed but we have already scheduled that. Your teachers can work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we're gonna have internet up and going again for those of you that have online classes and you'll be able to contact your teachers about questions. I think you're gonna find that they're gonna extend deadlines and help you uh, do everything they can to help you to be successful. Uh, if you have night classes, we understand that you might have curfews and I think you're, that most counties are going to extend their curfews at night till 10 and 11, but we can help you with that if we need to. So just know that Chipola College cares. We are just so proud of you that you have selected Chipola College and we just see it as a part of our mission to help you be successful. When that first day when the students came back, you could see it in their faces because we, we all wondered, would they come back who wouldn't be able to come back. And then when we saw them in class and we, the dean was with us, uh, Dr. Stevens, and she was just there as a support and they knew. They knew that we had their backs, per se, and that we were with them. Um, we even had some of them say they were actually glad to be back, which was surprising because we all knew that they had so many things they needed to be doing at home. But it just gave us the strength and um, they came back and saw the support that came from all the faculty. Faculty made time for the students. Um, they came on back. The school was up and running, uh, even though limping to some degree, um, and it provided a safe haven or a haven for people to come to, even though they don't have electricity at their home, even though they didn't have phone service, they didn't have internet service. They came to the college. They had many of those things. Uh, not perfectly running the way it had been before, but um, I think it provided optimism 
to them even as individuals, to our students and our community, that we're gonna be okay, that we were one of the first institutions to be up and running to some extent in the whole community, and I'm proud of that. We are all proud of that. We had a little bit more normalcy. Our pace was a little bit back to the same. Our focus wasn't as sharp because we couldn't, we still had to live a little more primitively than before, but we still had to go to school. We still had to study. I tried to study by candle and read by candle and, and uh, it doesn't work real well. But um, we also had clinicals still and driving to clinicals with the debris all over the roads. It, it was tough until you got out of the destruction area. We, um, but once we got in and we got rolling and we got in a groove, some, some of the students didn't have electricity for a week or more, even after the program started back. We just had to persevere and grind through it because we worked hard to get into the program. We wanted to finish the first semester and, and hopefully finish it on time. We were trying to get everybody that had a place to go, a place to go. We got a lot of foreign kids in here who didn't have places to go. A lot of kids who live up north who, who really couldn't get back home. So a lot of our parents from, from kids that are here with us, they took kids in and fed them and housed them. And we thought that was only going to be for a three or four day period, which ended up being for a two, three week period. And, uh, you know, just can't be thankful enough for, for everybody who have a great heart and, and, and taking people in and taking care of people in this, in this challenging time. We informed them about the pantry, food pantry that was available here on campus, the gas cards that were available, um, scholarships, the counseling services, and really to, to just, you know, again, assist our students in any way possible. The faculty adjusted class schedules, um, ensured the students that they could use, utilize the computer lab whenever needed, and that we would continue, uh, we would continue with our normal schedules as much as we possibly could. I think coming back from the storm showed our strength as a college um, because it was nothing like what we left, as, a, as we said. Um, we didn't have internet. We didn't have a lot of the comforts that we had um, before, when we left. And so just the fact that the students came back, the faculty came back, and it showed our, our outstanding shiny moment that we came back in full force and we didn't let Michael tear us down.